Good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Basically Biblical. Let's begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sabbath day, a time to spend thinking about our relationship with you, thinking and dwelling on all of the promises that you have given us and the mercy and forgiveness that you bestow upon us. Lord, thank you for keeping us safe all this week. Thank you for protecting us from hurt, harm, and danger that we probably are not even aware of. Thank you, Lord, for remaining in control and assuring us of your continued love and protection. We ask now, Lord, that you would come in and enter in to our presence even the more today. Make your presence known in a powerful way through our continued study about your character, your titles, the many names that you have given us to try to understand you better. This is our prayer. Amen. First, I'd like to say that um, Friday night's preview, um, I don't actually know what happened there, but uh, it seemed to um, not uh, record well, so I ended up deleting it, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm still learning a lot of these um, nuances about recording uh, the podcast, and so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'll get better. And until that time, I pray that you will have uh, patience with me. <clears throat> but I'll make sure that what was going to be covered uh, is still covered today, and that you understand some other of the Hebrew names of God that we have been exploring. But first I'd like to ask you to think about what we mean when we say having good character or what we mean by trying to focus on a person's character. You know, in our society, uh, many people think about what are the um, characteristics that are valuable, you know. Um, so when we say characteristics, what do we, what do we mean by that? And so I would like to talk about that so that we can appreciate more of what God's character is. And remember, I mean, obviously we know that we are not gods. We are, uh, we are not perfect. So when we try to understand who God is, what God is, and where God is, we're looking to understand his character. And so let me define. Character is the sum total of the features, traits, and ac actions of an individual's nature. 
a feature, trait, characteristic, which sums up a person's individual nature. So we talk about moral or ethical qualities. We talk about someone being, someone having an honorable character. There are other ways to speak of character. So I would like to also think about the literary understandings of character. I think there are about seven of them in total, but we'll just speak about the primary, primary uh, character types that we can find in literature. And I think this will <laughs> give us uh, an adjusted perspective of who God is in our lives. For example, we know about the, the character role called the protagonist. The protagonist is the main character in a story and this character would be probably associated with people like um, the heroine Katniss in Everdeen, the Hunger Games to, uh, to the Miserable Rich, like Dostoevsky, you know, the main character. The main character for whom the entire story is both hinged on and revolves around. So we could think of God as our, you know, within our story, within his story, he's the protagonist. He's the main character. He's the character, the person on which everything hinges. So then... In the other definition of character, when we spoke about a person's features or traits, characteristic behaviors, then we can even more appreciate the complex nature of God as we explore the various names of God and if we can keep in our minds this notion of the protagonist the complex layered understanding of who the personality of God is what are his characteristics we can think about what would we desire of others to have as part of their personality or characteristics, their traits, their most prevalent way of behaving. And then think about how that relates to our understanding of God. Then there is the antagonist. In a story, the antagonist is the anti-hero, the opposite uh, of the protagonist. Uh, he or she is the villain. So obviously, we can think of uh, Lex Luthor, uh, Lord Voldemort, uh, Dr. Charles Nichols in The Fugitive, and other such antagonists. But who might we be thinking of in terms of an antagonist to our protagonist, 
God. Well, obviously, we're talking about the anti-Christ, anti-God, the villain in the story, typically the despicable person in the story. And in this case, we would include Satan, Diablo, the devil. We would certainly be speaking about any person or concept or behavior that goes against what our protagonist represents. <clears throat> there is a scripture that ask us to hate what God hates and love what God loves. So, are we for the protagonist or are we against the protagonist? And really, it's just that simple. There's another scripture which I'm sure you're familiar with that says you can't serve God and mammon. In other words, you can't serve two gods. You can't serve two masters. Because the scripture says you would either love the one or hate the other. You know, very basic. If you look at a coin, there's one side. And there's the other side. You can't land, if you flip that coin, you can't land on both heads and tails. Right? So, you have to choose. Are you for the protagonist? Or are you against the protagonist? Very simple, very easy, very basic. So, therefore... If we are for the protagonist, then we would love the things that the protagonist loves, in this case, God, and we would hate the things that the protagonist hates. Many people like to try to straddle the fence, but there is no straddling of the fence. So, then we come to the third character that I'd like to speak of in terms of uh, literary concepts. And that is the love interest. The love interest is the protagonist object of desire. So, who might be the love interest of God? Of course, it's us. There's a scripture that says that we are the apple of his eye. When we speak of that in human terms, we know that if someone is the apple of our eye, they receive all kinds of devotion, forgiveness, respect, honor, and also we would bend over backwards to give the apple of our eye anything that they ask, think about, or often we think about giving the apple of our eye uh, things and devotion that sometimes they don't even ask for. But because we love that person, because we value that person, because we're so fond of that person, we say that they are the apple of our eye. They are deserving of all the best that we can give them. Our love interests. And God says that we are his love interests. And because God is more perfect, the perfect one, uh, greater than we are, imagine the depth, the enormity of his desire to bestow upon us all that we could ever think or ask, 